Hi, um, this is Becoming a Google Certified Educator Level 2, Part 3. Um, we're going over Unit 3, which is using advanced features to optimize workflow. It, there's a focus on Google Calendar, very heavy focus on Calendar in the beginning of this unit. Um, they mentioned Docs, the, un the Learning Center, um, Google Mail, um, Sheets, Forms, Chrome, and Web Store app extensions. But the first half is very calendar heavy, and the last half is very add-on extension app heavy. Calendars is something I don't have a lot of uh, experience with, so I had to spend a lot of time on the calendars. Um, these were some things that might give you a... Uh, give you trouble if you're not a, a calendar guru. Um, you can create a new calendar that's separate from your classroom calendar by going to My Calendars and se selecting Create New Calendar. Um, by default, you do not have a personal calendar. You have just the classroom calendar. To change sharing settings so that if you wanted to share it with parents, you can navigate to the Calendars tab of the Settings page of the Google Calendar. You can share this calendar or click the option to make the calendar public. Please note that if you want to open up the calendar to appointments, it does need to be public before you try to do that. Also, it needs to be public before you try and embed it in a website. Um, to embed a calendar, select Settings from the gear icon on the top right. Select the second tab labeled Calendars. Click the name of the calendar you want to embed and look for a section of the HTML code near the Embed This Calendar section. You're going to copy and paste that section of the code right into your Google site, and you can embed it right there. To create appointment slots, you're going to select a chunk of time from your Google Calendar. A box will pop up asking for details of the event. At the top of the box, there's an option labeled Appointment Slots. Fill out the details, then share the link with your audience. Um, Another important note for uh, parents who are trying to fill out your appointments, everybody needs to have a Google account if they are going to register for an appointment on your calendar. So that may be a roadblock to parents trying to participate with your calendar. The next section of, the, of Unit 3 was Google Labs, something I had never even heard of. Um, Google Labs are features that are still being tested. They are essentially in alpha or beta which means they're not quite ready necessarily for to, for to become a full-time feature of whatever Google uh, program you're using. They are generally featured in uh, Google Mail and Google Calendar. Um, you can click them on and off anytime. There's no risk in using them. They're not going to damage your app in some irreparable way. Um, to find labs, you're going to click the gear icon in the top right corner of either Mail or Calendar. Um, click Settings, then click Labs, and you're going to be presented with a list of all kinds of options. You can turn on and off any ones that you would like to try. Um, some of the ones that are more useful, there's one about canned responses. So if you have a traditional response or a letter template that you use over and over again, say an email that, invent, that invites uh, parents to school for back to school night, you can grab the canned response op, uh, lab and put that to work. Um, there's another one that lets you unsend email within 30 seconds of sending it. Um, a domain administrator can override your idea to use labs just simply by saying that you can't use them. Um, Labs can break, they can be removed by Google if they decide that they're not useful or they're too filled with bugs. That said, they're pretty interesting. They're new ideas on old apps. So definitely check them out if you are interested in optimizing your workflow and trying new things with the apps you use every day. The rest of the unit seems to focus on apps versus extensions versus add-ons. Um, Extensions are an extension of the Chrome browser itself. So we work in Chrome all the time. Extensions just add on to its functionality. Then you have apps, which are like totally different programs, just like the programs we would install on a hard drive, except they exist in the cloud. Um, they don't have to be installed on your hard drive. And, and they're, and, um, they're bigger, they're more powerful. They're probably the most powerful out of the three things we're talking about here. Then you have add-ons which extend the functionality of apps. 
So they're like extensions for the programs that are used on your browser. Um, you can share the programs with students through email, through Google Plus communities. Um, domain uh, administrators can force install uh, the, the apps on students' Chromebooks. Um, they can pin it to the shelf. They can create a domain specific web store that the students can look in. Um, you can also tell the students, search the web store, find this, and install it. Most times they'll listen. Then there was a separate section on add ons because add ons seem to be so critical to um, Google Education users, particularly add ons like Fluberoo, Doctopus. Um, there are other ones that are basically quiz creators and graders. Um, they really are essential to a quick workflow in the classroom if you use anything that involves multiple choice tests. Um, the add ons are available from the add ons menu. Um, there are no add-ons for slides. I was kind of surprised at that. They're, they're pretty much in every other major Google app. Um, add-ons are created based on JavaScript in case you're feeling crafty and you want to create your own. Um, and a review of the add-ons, for if you are studying for this certification, it may be worth your time to go into the add-on store and see the many things that are offered to you as a Google user that can extend your abilities to use Google Apps. Um, and that is this entire unit. It's mostly about taking the apps you know and making them work for you in ways that you didn't expect. So until next time.